Today's episode of the Ubuntu Show is brought to you by Mt. Gox, mtgox.com, online Bitcoin exchange, and the Thank You Economy Book by Gary Vaynerchuk, thankyoeconomybook.com. Hi everybody, Bruce Wagner here. Welcome to the Numero Uno premiere number one, initial first episode number one <laughs> of the Ubuntu show. Ubuntu Linux is uh, the operating system of choice around here anyway. Uh, it replaces the need for Windows and or Mac. Sort of. So <laughs> anyway, this is a new show. This is our initial premiere episode. Uh, and uh, we're going to introduce you to Ubuntu as a desktop operating system. It's free open source software. Uh, and it's, a, it's the number one flavor of Linux, which you've probably heard of. So today I have a, uh, an incredible guest. He is a columnist from IT World and his own website, Profit.org. His name is Brian Profit. Are you there, Brian? Hey, how you doing today, Bruce? Hey, good, good, good. So where are you joining us from? You're not here. No, I'm definitely not there. Um, <laughs> um, I'm actually coming to you from northern Indiana. Northern Indiana. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. That's kind of a sister state to where I'm from in Ohio. So good. Oh. Mid Midwestern. That, that's unfortunate. <laughs> I always think Indianapolis is like a sister city to Columbus. If you blindfolded me and took me there, I almost wouldn't be able to tell you where, which one I was in for a little while. They're so similar. Yeah. But, <laughs> but no, we love the Midwest. <laughs> so I first read about, where did I find you? On Twitter or reading your blog or both? I can't remember which one came first. Oh, I think it was an article you wrote. Okay. That's right. It was an article. It's coming back to me. An article you wrote about um, Unity versus, is it Gnome? Gnome? How do you pronounce it? Uh, I've always heard it as Gnome. Gnome. All right. So it's a little weird, but uh, we'll say it. We'll call it Gnome. So um, in the newest version, well, uh, actually the current version is brand new, but the, say, the previous version of Ubuntu, they decided uh, Canonical, which is the company that sponsors Ubuntu, uh, decided to switch the windowing user interface, I guess the windowing presenter, is that what you call it? Yeah, sort basically, of? the, the, okay, the from window shell. Mm -hmm. The shell, okay. From GNOME to Unity. So tell it, what's the story? What's your take on that? Well, basically what was going on, um, and, and I'm highly condensing this, and, mm -hmm. and Canonical may want to correct this you know, later, but basically the, the story was um, the Canonical developers and the GNOME um, developers each had their own ideas about where they wanted the interface to go. So they essentially tried to work things out, but at some point, um, the core Ubuntu development team decided that, you know, they, they just couldn't stay with where GNOME was going towards the 3.0 series that it's in now. So um, Canonical decided to basically um, push out its own um, windowing uh, shell, basically, called Unity, because they really had a different idea about what direction they wanted to go. Um, in terms of GNOME. And now we see in hindsight that the plan was they really want to focus not only on the traditional desktop like laptops and PCs, but they also want to focus on um, the, the mobile tablet and smartphone um, interface as well. So you think your take is that this Unity interface um, is primarily designed to, I guess, appease or to work better in the form factor of a tablet or a mobile device? Is that the idea? I, I think so. I think it's trying to be a hybridization of the mm -hmm. desktop and, and the mobile platforms. Um, one of the things that a lot of people complained about um, with Unity at the beginning, myself included, was the fact that there was really a compared to all other forms of Linux and Linux interfaces, there was a real lack of customization and configuration. You, it's hard to actually make Unity do a lot of the things that, you know, other Linux environments could do. I mean, mm. you can't move menus around. Um, it's, it's hard to theme, that sort of thing. 
And really now, I think we see why you don't do those things on a mobile platform. Right. So if you're going to have something that sort of bridges that gap, then yeah, you're you're going to want something that's a little more you know solid mm -hmm. and less configurable. So from a from a technical person like a, a, an old Linux hack, that's for sure what they would look at is the conf the customization features of it. From um, I always look at things from a novice. Um, barely can work a mouse crowd, and you know I have uh, you know um, I have users who have been sitting <laughs> like new new employees who sit in a, at their computer here in the office for two weeks and 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 ask what is that Ubuntu thing you're always talking about? And I'm like that's what you're using. It's like that that uh, you know dish soap commercial. You're soaking in it. You know you're using that. You're using it every day. And they're like really? I didn't know that. I mean they're just using Chromium yeah. or Chrome. And they're using the web 90% of the time, and they probably notice there's a little bit of a different file manager, but they don't even realize they're using it. So for that crowd, um, for me, it wasn't so much about the customization. It was simply usability. I know it's supposed to be easy to use, but for me, I found it much harder to use, and we lost him. <laughs> so this seems like a great time to go to uh, thank our sponsors. So let's do that. We'll just uh, thank our sponsors. And if it weren't for them, you know we wouldn't be here. So be sure to check out Mt. Gox. Now, if you haven't heard of Bitcoin, it's B-I-T-C-O-I-N. Bitcoin is the money of the future. It's an electronic cryptocurrency, it's called. It's based on three technologies that have kind of merged into one. One is peer-to-peer -peer file sharing technology in general. And the, another one is the state-of-the-art in cryptography. And the third is the idea of a limited quantity of something being a value, if we all agree it has value. So that's what Bitcoin is. If you want to learn about Bitcoin, check out bitcoinme.com. That's my site that I created, just kind of like a brochure about Bitcoin to explain what it is. But it's phenomenal. Uh, in fact, the December issue of Wired Magazine is going to have a big article about it. There are many, many articles online about it. Um, but anyway, the number one Bitcoin online exchange site, which would be where you, if you want to buy or sell Bitcoin for cash or your local currency, this is where, where you would do it online as opposed to meeting somebody in person. And the number one exchange site is Mt. Gox, and they're our sponsor. So that was a long way of introducing who Mt. Gox is. It's mtgox.com. That's like mountain, mtgox.com, Mt. Gox Bitcoin Exchange. They have uh, like more than 90% market share. They're the oldest, most reliable, trustworthy online exchange for Bitcoin. In fact, you can actually use them as a Bitcoin wallet uh, to securely store and hold your Bitcoins. It's a free account. You just uh, go to mountgox.com, sign up, and in moments you'll have your own Mt. Gox account. And you can use it very, very securely. They have a little button that says order a YubiKey. And it's a Y-U-B-I-K-E-Y, -I, -E I think it is, YubiKey. Anyway, you order one of those things, and it's a little tiny USB dongle that you carry on your keychain, and you can't log in without it. So you have to plug that in to, to log in, which is great, because that'll protect you. Even if you're using some public computer that's virus-ridden, it won't matter, because nobody can get in without that YubiKey. So anyway, check it out, mountgox.com. Now they handle 16 currencies for this new worldwide um, currency uh, called Bitcoin. So currencies as in, like it doesn't matter if you have uh, Australian dollars, Euros, US dollars, Canadian dollars, or Japanese yen, 16 different currencies you can buy Bitcoins for dollars and sell them. And the thank you economy. Um, new York Times bestselling author Gary Vaynerchuk has written his uh, second book, it's called Thank You Economy. You can check it out at thankyoeconomybook.com. Gary is amazing. I've always been a huge fan long before we started uh, promoting his book. But this book, I've read it twice now. It's amazing. It talks about how you can use the state of the art in internet, social media technology to promote your business in the right way. 99% of people are not doing it in the right way. But you want to promote your business in the proper way using the state of the art technology. You've got to read this book. It's a primer. Um, to teach you how to bring your business a in a scalable way, no matter how large or small your business is, you can use these tricks and tips and tools to uh, not just sell a product, but to create a relationship, a long-lasting one-on-one uh, -on -one relationship with your customers and really build your brand. So we thank Gary Vaynerchuk and thank you, Economy Book. Check it out.
So we're back. Brian, we lost you. Uh, <laughs> so I'll tell you what, click right here to continue with part two of this episode.